Okay, welcome back to the Powers on Sports podcast. We've got a real pleasure for you as well as we as we are in Super Bowl week. And um, we are going to talk to a young lady who I had who we had on earlier in the summer, part of our Life of the Wife series, Miss Erica Betcher. She's the wife of James Betcher, who's an assistant coach for the San Francisco 49ers. And uh, obviously, we all know that the 49ers were in the NFC title game a couple weeks ago and um, fell to the Los Angeles Rams as we lead up into the Super Bowl. So just want to bring back Erica. I know Erica, we're going to talk to Erica about just the season in general. And she, I know she was at the game a couple weeks ago. So we're going to talk to her a little about that and just kind of what she has in store for her and the family as we head into the offseason. So welcome back to the podcast, Erica. Hey, Jason. Thanks for having me. All right, so give the give the audience a little perspective of you were in a you were in the NFC title game. I saw you guys took the family, the, the the kids and such to see the game in LA. Tell the audience what a beautiful tell them about the atmosphere of the stadium. It's a brand new stadium and it's kind of the high-tech state of the art stadium now. Just give the fans and the audience a little a little perspective of, of that whole stadium scene. Yeah, it was definitely an experience to remember. Um, my 10 year old son went with us. So that was a pretty special experience for him to have and, and take all in. Um, just the, the support from the Niners fans, the, the fan base is tremendous. Yeah. It's, it's, it's really cool. I would say, gosh, I would say it was like 60, 40. I mean, we, we probably represented better than LA did. So to have that in the NFC championship, is amazing for on the road in, in the other team stadium. That's the amazing part. Yeah, we were pretty hyped up, you know, especially with all the the social media drama of, you know, the, the Niners fans can't even get a hold of tickets. They're blocking, right. you know, let's give an LA zip code. So, um, did Kelly we Stafford? Fired up. Did, did did you get with Kelly Stafford? I know she was giving away <laughs> tickets to everybody. I know, it's so funny. <laughs> No, we actually, um, my son and I decided we wanted to be right there by the tunnel where the players and the coaches were coming out. Okay. Um, so that was a cool experience being right there by the field and getting That's to cool. see dad walk out on the field and all that. Now, mm -hmm. a little inside football, does the, do, do all the coaches for road games like this, do they get a couple of tickets that they can provide for their family or the option to buy some tickets? How does that work as far as coaches go yeah. and their families? Yeah. So it's different. Um, especially whoever's hosting the game. Um, the last NFC championship we went to um, was more at the Cardinals with Bruce right. Arians. Right. And we were in Carolina, <laughs> a little different experience. I remember that being probably the coldest I've been at a football game. I remember um, that I did not go to the cold. I remember yeah. that was a cold one. I, yeah, I didn't go to the Green Bay game, so I can't compare that. Um, but I remember our seats literally for that game, that was with the Cardinals being, and the very, I think my my back was touching the center block ball <laughs> at the top of the stadium. Um, and that was outdoors, obviously. Um, that's just, that's how it is. When you're the away team, we do get tickets that we can purchase. Right. Um, but they are going to be the nosebleed seats, you know. Yep. Yep. So, But I'll tell you, SoFi, those nosebleeds are pretty cool still. You know, because you've got that huge jumbotron, and right. uh, we did have family and friends that sat up there with the rest of our crew, and they, they, you know, it was a, it was a pretty good, good view still because they now can see there, everything. Now, were there a bunch of 49er wives and people part of the family that were at the game as well? Oh yes, um, most of all the wives went, and we had a good crew of kiddos that went as well. Um, I actually organized a party bus for 30 of the coaches' wives and their kids. Look at so you, that the was, social director. Yeah, that nice. was fun. That's we fun. had big screen TVs and everything so we could watch the Bengals, you know, on ah, the way to the game. So, nice. Yeah. See, I've, heard, I've heard on TV they say it's a disaster to get in and out of that stadium as far as parking and Whew. just getting in and out of there. I mean, I've been to a lot of NFL stadiums, and I will tell you this was – it was quite the journey. I think just <laughs> – <laughs> we had a driver obviously with our bus and he dropped us off at the like a VIP lot area and literally where my seats were we were going to have to walk all the way around the stadium to get to that entrance and then once you got to the entrance it was about an hour wait to get in so luckily we were able to snag a, a security guy and sneak our way in a little bit but it, it is quite the process yes plus you've got the vaccination cards and you've got 
um, yeah, you know, to tell, all the yeah. things that you're checking. Yeah, it's a lot. To, to tell the yeah, it's a great. I'm glad you brought that up. California's got a little more different vaccination rules than some other yeah. places around the country. Talk, talk to us about what you had. Did you have to prove? Did you have to show a vax card and all that stuff? Or what yeah. Was the process. So it's kind of the same thing as when we do things in San Francisco. They've got pretty stringent rules, and um, LA is, you know, it's kind of a spike there right now, so they're pretty locked down, but. You have to have a vaccination card or you have to have um, a PCR test within, I think, 48 hours, proof okay. of that. Now, <laughs> you imagine the craziness of all the people in the lines. Um, you know, it was kind of hit or miss with whether they checked, to be yeah. honest. But you were definitely knowing that you couldn't get in the stadium unless you had something. So, sure. Yeah. But I think that's what held the lines up as well. You know, it's hard to get all those people in there. So. <laughs> So talk, all right, so uh, obviously those, obviously you, everybody should know by now the 49ers were winning and didn't end up winning the game. The Rams went 20 to 17 to go to the Super Bowl. Just in the aftermath of the game, just you, just the, the emotion of, did you get to see James right after the game? How did all that work and, and all that yeah. good stuff? So again, I've had a, another experience of an NFC championship. Um, this one was way more exciting till the end, I'll say. Um, right. I, I mean, the whole entire game, we felt strongly we were going to win that game. Yeah. We had a nice lead and just the end, you know, that last few minutes just kind of right. sealed the fate um, in the other direction. Uh, but it was pretty cool to know that we were in that game the whole time. Sure. You know? So I don't know if that makes it more devastating at the end right. <laughs> to, to lose it. I think so. But just... You know, I was sharing with family and friends. It was like, it's such a bummer to almost get to that final. Like, that's what us football families live for is, is sure. the opportunity to get that far. But to see where we started, like the last time I was on your podcast, we were talking to see where we started right. and where we got to. I mean, that's right. that's pretty, pretty special. You have to have a special team, special coaches to get that far for sure. And p- people don't real people forget the, the 49ers played in Los Angeles in week 18 and had to win the game to get in the playoffs. They yeah. were getting, they, you guys were getting destroyed in the game and down 17, nothing came all the way back to win that game to just to get in the playoffs. Yeah. yeah. Then had to play three more road games in a row, culminating back in Los Angeles for the NFC yeah. title games. So you basically played four straight road games in must win situation kind of scenarios. So like you said, yeah. a tremendous credit to the whole team and the whole organization for being able to do that. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So we are super proud win or lose for that game but just to have lost in that last few minutes was it was pretty oh, tough no, we all I, took it pretty hard mm-hmm. no I'm sure I know it's because like I said we, we all think as fans oh the, there's next year and oh but when you're in that business that you never know if that's the yeah. last chance you get an opportunity to go that every year is a playoffs. different team yeah. yeah I mean you just never know and obviously professionally you never know if you're going to be with the, you know mm-hmm. what team you're going to be with and all that yeah. stuff so those are those are just moments. Um, all right, so real quick, tell the audience, give their audience a quick refresher how you and James met. I know you're a Minnesota girl, right? <laughs> I'm not. My friend Jessica Hyden is the Minnesota. Yes, Jess, that's right. Jess. <laughs> she's a Cardinals coach. Um, yeah, she's the she's the Minnesota girl. I'm hey. the Hoosier. I think we have that in common yes. that we both were yes. uh, IU grads. Is yes. That right? yes, yes, yeah. So, so tell us where yeah, you and James met. So that's kind of, that's where we met. So he went to um, a small NEI school in my hometown in Fort Wayne, Indiana. Um, And I went to IU and um, I think it was my sophomore year. We met um, at a mutual like football party house in my hometown. And he played football with some of my high school buddies. He had a football house with them. So after we met, we were just together since then and been traveling, (laughs) traveling the country ever, ever since. So yeah, I think he was a senior that year. Um, so he had one more year of playing. And then, yeah, then we started moving across the country. Yeah. Hey, that's right. That's right. So you to tell the um, three children, correct? Three children and uh, one on the way. So oh, congratulations. That, <laughs> yeah, that, so it'll be four cool. uh, this summer. Yeah. That's awesome. I know. Yeah. We talked last time. That wasn't, that wasn't in the picture. This is true. We weren't sharing that news. <laughs> yeah thank you so we stay pretty busy um very blessed and you know they're awesome kiddos so very cool very cool all right so tom 
So obviously this is the um, a time of the year, lots of stuff going on coaching wise, lots of coaches getting hired and all that kind of good stuff. Do you know guys what the plan is as far as you're going to be back in San Francisco this year? I know one of their coaches, one of their offensive coaches just got hired to be the head coach in Miami. So you never yeah. know that might be a possibility. Who knows? This is a crazy time of the year in the co in the pro coaching world. Just just talk to me yeah. about your how you handle that as the wife. Never maybe there's an opportunity for a promotion or another opportunity somewhere else. How mm -hmm. do you kind of handle that and discussing those kind of things with James if opportunities like that do arise? Yeah. Um, so I I think I mentioned the last time we talked that we make like kind of a pros and cons thing. You know, um, you never count anything out. You never think, right. oh, we're definitely going to be here. We're, we're definitely not going to be here. Um, so excited for our friends, the McDaniels that yep. just, um, found out yesterday. So yep. we're going to miss them. Um, that's also another hard part is getting close to people and getting to know them. And then, you know, next day they're literally gone. So, yep. Yep. um, the mindset that I have just, we've had, you know, years where we've been like back to back four years in a row moves. Um, those are hard and not fun just because you feel like you don't have a chance to plant roots, especially when you start having kids that are entering into middle school, right. which we do have a 10 year old that's going to be going into middle school next year. So that's a little bit of a you know game changer as far as him transitioning a little bit, you know, more easily. So um, as of now, we are 49ers next year. Yeah. So yay for building um, two years in a row. But the, yep. yeah, the crazy thing know. is, yes. Yeah, so the crazy thing is, is you know, in all honesty, he could get a call tomorrow and it could be something that would be of interest, you know, sure. and, um, he would talk to his agent and, and we'd go from there. So you don't count anything out. And there's not exactly a time of year where like things happen, even in March, you know, things happen right. after the Super Bowl, especially with this being a kind of a backed up year with things being pushed back a week. So very cool. All right. So yeah. uh, so let's say something happened tomorrow or a week from now. Would your kid? Would you and the kids stay through the school year? Would you guys pick up and move it immediately? How do you kind of have you handle moving this time of the year when the kids are in school? Um, it it just depends on the situation. Um, yeah. For example, we were in Arizona last year, and James took the job in January. So the kids and I chose to remain in Arizona for the remainder of the school year because California wasn't even in session because of COVID. Right. Um, we don't like to be apart for long. So when we went to the Giants from the Cardinals, um, we moved within two months of him getting the job. So okay. it's about like, what's the housing market like there? What's the school system like? If I can get that figured out pretty quickly, then we'll make the move early. Okay. Um, all wives will give you different answers of what's sure, best, sure. like get them acclimated early or let them finish with their friends. And, you know, cause we're typically gone for the summer. So they don't have that opportunity to get to know the neighborhood, you know, kids and things. So I don't know what we would do here. Probably try to figure out a way to move within two months or so to be okay. together. Yeah. Are the, are new, when, when you do, when you do get a new job with a team, is the new team very helpful in helping you that transition period? Do they provide you resources? Hey, here's movers, here's this, here's that. Or is it kind of more on you to have to handle that as the family? Yeah, no, there's lots of resources, especially with the NFL. Um, we sometimes choose which moving company we're going to go with. Sometimes they give you a couple to choose from. And nowadays it's, it's much easier than it was back, you know, 10 years ago when we were doing all this, you can yep. do a virtual like zoom session where I can walk them around the house and they can give you an estimate that way, which is really nice. Okay. Uh, yeah. And, you know, typically we have people that pack us and move yep. us on. So probably the, the trickiest thing is just finding that next place and the school systems and right. the sports and all of that again. So, yeah. Very cool. Very cool. All right. So now we're in the off season one. Um, obviously the schedule, let, let's just assume he stays with San Francisco. You got a little bit of debt. Is this a time of the period where he has a little bit more downtime? He doesn't have to be in the office as long as many days. He yeah. probably has a little bit of time off this time of the year. Is that correct? That is correct. Yes. So we literally live <laughs> those last two months December January are like for us coaches wives and families we're just counting down the days to have our husbands back for sure um it's different everywhere we have been you know depending on the head coach and what their schedule is um we're super blessed here uh Kyle's given us three weeks off 
Nice. So basically the guys don't have to go back until um, the combine. Right. Right. So we have until the end of February. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. No, because I know people, again, people, they can imagine what the, what the grueling schedule is, but you live it. So you know what the, what the demands are on James's time and your time and, and all that stuff. Um, tell us about real quick about a, a during, during the football season this year, did you got, were you and James able to, to plug out a night one day, Hey, we're going to have a date night or a lunch or a dinner together, kind of a, with the family, kind of an every, every week kind of thing. Were you able to do that? Not this season. Um, honestly, there was so many road games that they had to leave on Fridays. Okay. So when you're looking at the schedule and you're, I think this is the most we've ever had. Um, and some teams, you know, feel like it makes a difference for them to leave on a Friday as opposed right. to leave on a Saturday. Um, but if we're on different coasts, hundred percent, you're going to leave on Friday, but just the way the schedule worked out this year, it felt like he was barely home any Fridays. Okay. And when he was, because we have this span of 10, six and one of our kiddos, dad wants to be home with the kids and, you know, we want to be together. So date nights were very few. Okay. And then also we were super cautious, you know, because of the COVID oh, stuff. Right, this year. right, right. Correct. So honestly, up until, you know, just recently, even after the season was over, we didn't even go to a restaurant, you know, just to be, you know, super Same. safe. and cautious. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Yeah. But, you know, you find your other ways to, to have a little date night here and there. But this season was um, especially hard for that, I'll say. Yeah. We'll, we'll give James and the, and the crew full credit. Their defense was tremendous this year. The 49ers yeah. had, a, had a great Thank defense. You. And I know James was part of a big part of that success and doing what he what he's doing with the defense. So I'm sure if, uh, again, there will be plenty of opportunity for James, you know, whether it's San Francisco or somewhere else. I know he's a very respected coach around the league and has done some great things. So I know he'll, he will be, he will be in the mix. I'm sure. Uh, mm -hmm. even if it's San Francisco or if it's not in San Francisco, so yeah. moving forward. So you should, you should be very proud of that. I certainly am. Yeah. And we're blessed to be here and make the run that we had for sure. And it's been cool to see with our coordinator, our defensive coordinator, this is his first year. Um, he did a tremendous job obviously. And, yep. you know, my husband's really enjoyed working with him and, um, the whole defensive staff. So it's cool when you've got, I don't know if you know our coaching staff well, but we've got some some pretty cool guys on our staff. And yeah, no, D'Amico you know, D'Amico rides is the defensive coordinator. And you got obviously you got Kyle Shanahan as the head coach. Yeah. The offensive coordinator just got the Miami Dolphins job. So yeah, you, and you yeah. got Wes Wes Welker's on the staff. He's the yeah. receivers coach, right? That's right. Yeah. So we've got we've got a great staff and we're blessed to be where we are. And you know, yeah. whatever happens in the future will happen. But be where your feet are, right? <laughs> how cool! How cool is it to live in San Francisco compared to other places you've lived? It's cool. Um, we're actually in Los Gatos, uh, okay. so it's about forty-five minutes from San Fran, okay. and the stadium is in Santa Clara. Right. So we're you know an hour, forty-five minutes to an hour from the beach. Um, we love our town that we live in. We can't beat the weather. It's a right. little chilly for my taste right now, That's but yeah. we do. We have our home in Arizona. Um, I was telling you we talked last so it's kind of nice right now for this three-week break um because we're going to head over to to arizona and spend some time there okay. um but that's like the perfect winter house you know because it's still yep. 75 and it's going to be coming up on 80 degrees so <laughs> we like this coast a lot a little there better than the, the new jersey new york coast <laughs> weather wise <laughs> they've been getting hammered with snow and we're at the beach so can't complain yeah, I'm, I'm with it's 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 been chilly down here in Tampa the last couple of days, but it's supposed to be back to 80, 80 degrees today. So you can't beat that yeah. in first of February for sure. Well, Erica, it's been a real pleasure. Thank you so much for doing this. I know it was, a, it was I know you'd rather be getting ready to go to the Super Bowl this weekend. I yeah. know that's, that's the goal and your guys are going to make it there. And uh, uh, I root for you every week, except when you play the Bucks. Just don't, don't be. <laughs> <laughs> yes well luckily i'll say i mean chris and i arians and i were definitely texting back and forth like all right we'll see you soon we'll see you soon and then they're like all right now you better beat those rams you know and then we're like we're gonna do it the cra the crazy thing is if the bucks beat the rams the game would have been in tampa and you guys would have been coming to tampa that's what i'm saying so i was like that was bittersweet because um you know another really good offensive friend of ours is yeah. at the bucks is the garber family and okay. our kids kind of grew up together, you know, in Arizona. And so the boys were so excited to be reunited 
Yeah. And then when we lost, it was like, oh, I, or, you know, you guys lost. We actually. lost first. We <laughs> lost first. And she's yeah. like, I, and we wanted to see y'all, but Jackson is just <laughs> devastated. So, and I that would have been bittersweet, obviously, to go up against them. I know, right? Um, so luckily we didn't have to play all this year. I don't know what our schedule looks like, looks like next year, but, and I'm sorry you lost Tom. That's sad. I know, right? Yeah. Jeez. Yeah. Not, let me, one, more, one more thing. I'll get you out of here. Do you get any kind of, do they give the coaches, and I know this is probably a, who gives a crap. Do they give the coaches <laughs> any kind of commemorative ring or anything like that, jewel, any of that kind of stuff for making the NFC championship game? No, okay. no. <laughs> I, thought, I thought I saw where you get, I thought I'd heard that you maybe got a ring or some piece of jewelry. Unless I haven't heard about it. Okay. And I don't remember anything from Carolina, honestly. So okay. I don't think so. Yeah. I didn't you know, basically so. what, what's the saying? Like nothing you do the entire season matters. Only one, one team right. matters, you know, although you do get something if you're in the Super Bowl, of course. So we'll be, we're rooting so hard for the Bengals. Our good friend, Lou Anamarumo that we're with up okay. in the Giants is the DC there. So. Yep. Okay. For them, we're rooting hard. I'm glad you, that's good. I'm glad you have a rooting interest in one of the coaching staff's relatives. That's good. That's good to know. Yeah. Well, Erica, thank you so much for your time. It's been great talking to you. We'll definitely catch up if, 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 uh, as we move into next year, if you'll do, if you'd be glad to do it again, good luck with your new addition coming to the family. Hope all that goes fantastic. And, uh, I'd love to get James on sometimes if he'd ever be game to come on and talk about his lovely wife. Oh, yeah. I'm sure he would be so excited to do that for you. <laughs> I would, I'd love to have yeah, him. Yes, I'll have to, to do it. you guys, yeah. All right. Thank you so much, Erica. Have a great uh, rest of your spring and summer. Hope Good luck with the kiddos and yes. then the new addition, and we will talk soon. All right. Thanks, Jason. Bye. Thanks, Erica. Bye-bye. Have a good night. You too. All right, and we will be right back on the Powers on Sports podcast.